still have quite a ways to go, you know, as far as I am concerned. Cool. Uh, before we actually go into where your, your musical career starts mm -hmm. or started, um, mm -hmm. tell us something about yourself. Okay. Um, I'm Jamaican. I'm Jamaican by birth, Jamaican by heart. Um, I'm a Christian. I am a father. I am very quiet, um, but yet a people person. Go figure it out. Um, yeah, I, 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 I love music. I love music. I, I enjoy reading as well. I enjoy cycling. I enjoy swimming. I enjoy a great conversation, a stimulating conversation. Um, I love good movies. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much me. That's pretty much me. Cool. Sounds interesting. But so, how does all of that um, impact your, your musical career? Um, well, you draw from life. You draw from life. Um, because as far as I am concerned, um, music is about... Music is... is uh, a creative and audible creative expression or conversation um, and it really conveys or has the power or the potential to convey ideas to convey moods to convey different things so I pull from life I pull from life speaks and troughs um, in my music, in my musical expression. So, yes. be it a movie, be it whatever, you know, and I am open to learn from anything and everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I think that everybody has something to contribute. Every voice um, deserves, um, every voice deserves um, to be heard. And, and the merit of thought, you know, mm -hmm. consider what the person is saying, you know, um, whether you use it or not is up to you, but value the person by considering, by consider what they are saying. Awesome. Yes, sir. All right. Let's, let's know here where the inspiration came from to, uh, to get into music. Hmm. Hi, Chris. I didn't really have a choice. Inspired? I didn't really have a choice, you know. <laughs> I didn't really have a choice in the matter. Um, really? Ever since I knew myself, I was just about music. And I've been told by my mother um, that even when I was in the womb, when she would hear music, I would jump. You know? Um, so my earliest recollections... Um, are of me making up songs and them kind of things and going on beating up hunger and thing and 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 and, and, and city them feel it and 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 all of that you know so as as and and um even as a child i remember um making I know I remember a drawing that I did in primary school. Not that I can draw, I can't draw for saving my life. <laughs> my son get that. Right, my son and my dad. Okay. Right? We can't draw. Right? Um, right. But I would draw like a keyboard. Right? Um, let me tell you, you don't know nothing. Um, I'm going to date myself now. And I remember putting DX7 on it. Right? Oh. You know, it's the exception from, from my, that concert I would have, would have seen, right? A Yamaha mm. DX7, right? Not that I was behind anything, not that I had access to anything or anybody, right? But I just saw the thing, loved the thing. Um, the musicians from my church or my by the denomination, man, if any one of them would have ever looked for me, I would have just dropped them, right? I just revered them. And I still honor them to this day, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it was always that. Um, 
I had the gift of I had the gift of gab. You know, I like I like I like, and that kind of sound a little contradictory to what I said earlier. Though I am quiet, um, I like to reason. I like to speak. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, me not really do it all the while and that kind of thing there, right? Um, but but I I wanted to be a lawyer, right? And mm -hmm. um, you're in high school, you know, you're thinking, why well, career, career, how do you, you know, what do you think you would do? How oh, everything about it over time because the music always playing me in school and I am beating this to beat, beat box and going on with a bag of things and walk around and I sing, sing, sing and them kind of stuff. Um, so I knew that, you know, this would be a plague. This would, anything else would suffer because of this. And even as a child, I chat enough. And even as a child, I used to get slap up because I would put on, we go in, the family going out and I put on one foot of pants. And may I tell you, concert start, keep before the other foot go on. Right? And I was just con <laughs> I constantly, just music going on in my head, music, music, music. Yeah. So, you know, I, I really did not have a choice in the matter. Long okay. short. Yes. Um, there's a school of thought. I don't know if this is true, mm -hmm. but I know you are very intellectual where this is concerned. Um, I heard that if, if a, a, a lady who is pregnant, if, mm -hmm. if music is played during pregnancy, mm -hmm. then automatically that has some influence on the, the unborn child. I don't know if they, they used to play music uh, when you were in the womb. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> well, if, that, if that was the case. Well, definitely, maybe not. Well, I don't know if daddy would play his guitar in the house, um, but mm. definitely maybe at church. You know, because I'm a pastor's kid, and my father used to play guitar and oh, okay. organ and and motor organ and them kind of thing there. Um, Interesting. So definitely in church, go church and at least a guitar a play. You know, mm -hmm. or for the international people, at least a guitar is being played. You know, so um, yeah. So I don't know what influence that may have had. Um, I've heard about classical um, music influencing a child and that kind of thing, you know, developing right. a mind, helping to develop mind um, scientifically, right? Um, I'm not sure if classical did play in my house because, you know, really things are too scientific, but hey, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. What, what, what are some of the things that you, your father you usually um, teach you on the instruments? Do you remember anything about that? Um, okay. So my father died early. Right. Oh. Um, oh. But he taught me, he taught me on the guitar, he taught me G, C, and D, open card. Mm -hmm. G, C, oh. and D. Yes. And I would play the guitar and play them card, the young one, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And um, he bought a keyboard, right? Um, took it home one day. And I went around it and started fooling around. And he said, no, don't use one finger, use two. And I went, oh, two finger and one and one and one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. But I mean, I mean, importantly, I, I could hear um, dissonant harmony. So I knew, okay, two fingers, you hear the two mm. things. You hear when right. they harmonize. Yeah. Because my eldest sister now taught me and my other sister, I am the baby taught me, taught oh, us okay. how to harmonize and stuff. So we mm -hmm. would sing in church and that kind of thing. And we would sing harmony and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's a part of the whole thing. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, so Adi, I am definitely trying to stay out of some of the questions that um, the viewers are going to ask you. All right. And as I said, I will not be. How you know what they're going long. to ask me, sir? <laughs> I know some of the questions that they normally ask, but sorry. <laughs> don't worry about that, all right? But um, this, is, this is one they're not going to ask you, all mm -hmm. right? I'm going to ask you, what would you say to all the persons who follow you on social media? The oh, persons who come to see you in Europe. Okay. Now is, now is the time to say something to them. 
Um, no, you, you, you have moved the conversation a little bit. <laughs> um, because I would, I, would, I, would, I would maybe first of all apologize because I don't really do the social media thing very well. Um, I don't really post too often and I don't go on with that bag of things. So I am very, very, very sorry. Um, for people who would see me all over the place, um, for people who would be interested in performances, um, hang in there, we soon come back. <laughs> all right. You see, I, I know they're going to ask you where you have performed and all of that, you know. All right. So mm. I'm definitely leaving that question for or, or a guess. All right. Okay. That, that's a question for the guests. All right. Yes, cool. my. They, right, they no are going to ask you that definitely. Okay. All right. Yes. Sir. But in in terms of I I, I we spoke to Gregory mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and Gregory told us that you were a great mentor to him. Right, and a lot of other persons have been testifying that Otti showed them this, Otti this, Otti that. Uh, when you're mentoring someone, what, how do you do it? What do you say to them? Lord have mercy. All right, what do I say to somebody who I'm mentoring? Um, musically, pretty much what I'm going to say tonight, you know. Pretty much what I'm going to say tonight. Um, um, that is, know who you are, know what you're doing, know your role, know why you are called to do what you are doing. What, why are you here? Um, understand that um, if you're playing in an aggregation, you're playing in a team. And just like a football team, a cricket team, or any team, each person have their roles, right? Mm -hmm. So understand that you are a part of the team to play a role. You now, where me and the people that I'm mentoring will clash, where I will cuss, right? Um, not, 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 you know, not disgracefully, but, you know, I will, I will be a little hard, is if you don't play your role, especially if you're playing with me or alongside me. Right. Um, yeah. So, you know, I get a little, I get a little antsy about that. Play your role. Do what you're supposed to do. If you are lead keys, do lead keys. Um, if you are support, then please support well. You know, um, I find that I get pigeonholed in support keys role a lot because maybe everybody's used to me doing that. You know. And, and I would wish that a lot more people would gr actually grow um, in that area. Yes, be able to play first keys and, you know, take the shine, right? Mm -hmm. But when it's not your time to take the shine, be able to support well. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, do you find a lot of the, the younger um, generation, the younger musicians coming up, do they come to you for advice? Are you having enough of those persons coming to you for advice? Um, well, you know, if I were to say if I have enough, it would mean that maybe I consider myself high and mighty or some big authority on anything so for people to come to me for advice. No, if you, if you, if you like what I do, um feel free to come um mm -hmm. if not then i guess you go where you feel free or you go towards what you like um so i guess maybe a lot of people don't like what i do because enough people don't come <laughs> and ask anything right um but i i also realize that maybe sometimes people can be a little shy people might have a particular perception of me Right, and maybe, mm -hmm. maybe think I'm unapproachable and that kind of thing. Come be quiet and, and stuff. And sometimes I might look serious, you know. So they mm -hmm. might say, Why well, no, something I'll go to him, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'm open, I'm right. willing to share. Right. You see, I'm happy you said that because um that's one of the reasons why I asked, because 
I've never spoken to you before, but I've always um, come to concert just because Otty is playing or Michael is playing and the other guys that have been playing back in from my time. Mm -hmm. All right. So speaking to you over the, these couple of days in sound check and all of that for, for this show, I, I know that you are a down to earth person. So mm -hmm. I just wanted it to, to get out there that you are someone who can be approached yes. for any sort of information. Most definitely. All right? Most right. definitely. So, young musicians, don't be shy when it comes to approaching Mr. Otney Lewis for any sort of musical information. All right? But final, final question for me, Sir Otty. Mm -hmm. I know you were you were formally trained as we spoke um, over the, the couple of days. Mm -hmm. How important is it for musicians or for a musician to be formally trained? Mm -hmm. Or what would you say to a musician who thinks that he should be self-taught or along that, that line of uh, reasoning? Okay. Um, so... Here is where the pastor son come in, and I will bring you back um, to, to um, the parable of, of the talents, you know. Um, whatever, whatever, whatever you have, you know, the potential that you have, okay, so you go around an instrument and you are able to do whatever, you know. That is just the first step. Understand that 10 million youth around the world have the same talent, have that same seed, right? You need to now connect with somebody, right? Whether, great, whether you want to consider them greater than yourself or maybe more experienced than yourself, or maybe you're your very, very own peer, right? Um, connect, right? And work it out. Develop the talent. Seek information because there's, there are always more things to learn, you know? You never have it. You don't have it all. So my encouragement is, is seek education. Go get it. Go do the thing then. Because, which I was saying to um, somebody the other day, um, by virtue of you being so talented, right, it is highly likely, especially with you now the globe, with the world becoming one global community, it is highly likely that you may be called to do greater things, right? So you may be called, you may get a job and with an artist, and the artist is just so phenomenal that... Um, you have to work, they call you now overseas to work with an orchestra, with the artists and, and that kind of thing. What are you going to do? Right? The, the raw talent alone can help you. Right? Um, some amount of training is necessary at that point. Right? Um, examples from my own life and my own career is um, when I do stuff with Peter Ashburn. You know, so you would see the band playing for rising stars back in the day. Peter Ashburn writes the scores, and we have to go through and read and do what we need to do, right? Because that's how the professional world works, right? When Tessan won um, the voice, um, I kind of I took that approach with the band, you know, and kind of going and that kind of thing because for how long she was out of this space where people played by ear and that kind of thing it now was the precision of and 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 with my rising stars experience um i understood the precision of the tv show and the track i mean our local thing is yet is, a, is at a smaller level but it's still the same principle right um so you have to you know, growing up um, with greater exposure, you have to be open to some of these things. So, 
arm yourself. Well said. Well said, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers and subscribers on YouTube, thanks for tuning in. Viewers on Zoom, thanks for being here. At this time, mine is the pleasure to present to you Mr. Othniel Lewis. All right. Okay. Hello again, everybody. So, um, when I was asked to do this program, uh, I wondered what should I present on. I ran a few ideas. You know, is I'm not going to know improvisation kind of thing because I don't consider myself any big anything. Um, but then I consulted with a few friends and thought about it, prayed about it, and I came up with the art of interpretation and adaptability, right? Um, and that is really the mindset of the, um, of the supporting musician. Um, like I said earlier, I consider myself blessed favored and all manner of things um, because I have been able or throughout my career I have been able to span a gamut of, of genres um, and at a high level for a Jamaican a high level in Jamaica um, so be it from working with a jazz jazz artist like uh, Monty Alexander Ernest Ranglin um, to doing black gospel things playing for like a Kirk Franklin a Mary Mary um, to doing reggae things um, doing um, stuff with Jimmy Cliff, um, doing stuff with Shaggy. That is a, a wide range of stuff, right? And so one has to be able to flex, you know, one has to be flexible, have a flexible mindset, an adaptable mindset, right? Um, so you understand now, okay. So in order to do that, you have to say, okay, really, what type of gig is this? Right? Who call me? Right? What is the act? What is the genre? Right? Um, who is my boss? What role am I hired to fill in the aggregation? And also important is what's the venue? Right? Practical examples are, you know, for the type of gig, you know, um, you have issues of, say, dress, deportment, you know. Um, is the event solemn or celebratory? Right? So that will, that will affect your whole demeanor, your whole, your whole approach, or should. Right? Um, so, and another thing to, I can also add, um, the size of the venue, what type of venue it is. Right? Is it an outdoor venue? Is it an indoor, small, intimate thing? Right? If it's an outdoor thing, then maybe the drum has to fill up the whole space um, with the sound of the kit. Um, but if it's a small, indoor, intimate thing, then if the drummer plays the same way as he does on a festival, um, nobody will be able to stay in the room. It's just him by himself. All the band people leave. All the um, patrons leave because the drum is too noisy, right? Um, so you have to understand all of those. Um, how contemporary is the is the act? Is the look and sound and feel of the act, right? As a keyboard player, well, yeah, as a keyboard player, those things are important because you go you go in now into choice of sounds. How do how would this person want the song interpreted? Um, what genre is it and what are the characteristics and the culture of the genre 
All right. So, so I, I can use say a Monte a jazz gig, say a Monte Alexander gig. I remember the first time I went, I had my first gig with Monte. Um, I was taken aback because when I saw the jazz trio, you know, these men were in suits, you know, everybody in suit and them kind of thing there, and that is what the gig called for, right? The suit and that kind of thing. Yes, that is a, a, maybe the look and feel of the the straight ahead jazz combo and your reggae combo now, you know, a little bit more relaxed, but they don't look they don't look like the arts thing, right? Um, and this is maybe budget them kind of you know, budget them thing, you know, um, up, you know, them man wear jacket and them kind of thing there and thing, right? Um, big up on ourselves, Stephen and Lenky and all of you wonderful people, right? Um, right, and then I alluded to this earlier. What role am I feeling? Am I the auxiliary keyboard player? Am I the main keyboard player? Um, so when I got the gig with Jimmy, with Jimmy Cliff, um, I was brought in to augment school band, right? School band is Chris McDonald, Daisy Jones, Dale Haslam at the time, and, and, and stuff, right? And, you know, I came in as a supporting keyboard player to support Chris. So, Dr. Cliff has a way that he, you know, experiments with his sound and, and, and members and stuff. So, he moved away from that sound and they were considering bringing me back. And he was saying, but, you know, what he can play, uh, can he give me vibes, but he can play. You know, because I just supported Chris. Right? And then I came back and realized, yeah, man, he can hold him on. You know? Um, so, things like that. Yeah, it can hurt you, but really, um, <clears throat> what role are you hired for? Right? Um, so, have a strong understanding of that. Right? Um, in order to properly fulfill the task, you need to know the who, the why, the what, the how, and the where of the role. Right? Who employed you? Right? Who employed you? Because, not that you need to suck up, but you need to understand, okay, really the book really stops at that person there, as it relates to you. Why were you chosen? Why you as against somebody else? Right? Is it that them couldn't do no better? And why you are the only available person? And really, you know, you are them really just trying with you. <laughs> you know? Right? So you understand now, okay, you can't be too comfortable. Not that you can be too comfortable in any case, but really in that event, you know, you need to show yourself, understand that, okay, this is an opportunity, right? So you need to capitalize on that opportunity, right? Um, as I said, what role were you hired for? How do they want it done? Um, I will draw back to, to uh, my time with Monty Alexander. Now, I went in feeling for somebody, right? And um, like I said, Desi, oh, I, well, I didn't say that. Desi, that's another gig I got from Desi, or through Desi, right? And um, I remember being at the airport and so I said, all right, Desi, really? How it go? What, what? Because I, I mean, Monty is like one of my all time. You no, know, it's not like one of my Monty Alexander is my all time favorite jazz pianist, right? Um, and I hear the albums that he does, the um, reggae and, and 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 jazz stuff. And I'm saying, okay, what what does he want me to do? Because I hear bang and shuffle, um, so that is like piano and the organ and stuff for the most part. And, and Desi, that was a key question and I got a key response. Desi said, okay, no, him don't really want, him don't want you play no piano. Hmm, no piano. Okay, because he's playing the piano. 
it might not be banging um, in the true sense of how we know we generally bang, right? Because he's floating, sometimes he might, you know, do some banging and stuff, but he's, he's you know, being himself, he's doing the manty thing, right? Don't put the piano frequency in his ears, he's playing piano. Play your organ, right? And so I went in, I played the organ, I stayed out of his way, right? Just colored what he was doing, right? And developed an appreciation for that whether there was a piano bang or not right just develop a, an appreciation for the sound that you're hearing and just enjoy the sound and live in the moment and deliver right um so that's a key thing with the how how to do the work um another thing to understand is the venue or the place right um, are you traveling overseas? Um, did you check the travel, the weather channel to see where you're going, to see what the weather is like for the period of the time that you're going to be there? You know, should you pack warm gears? You know, that kind of thing. So all of those things are, are important, right? Um, that sums up the adaptability part of the talk. Um, so, remember now, the adaptability is the ability for the mind, right, and the body to shift. But it's really, it's essentially a mental thing, right? So if, you're mental, if, you're, if you shift mentally, right, then your body can align. And you have to arm your body to align. How do you arm your body to align? Hmm. You arm your body by understanding say things like the genre, right? So you do your research. You're going to play some Latin tonight, right? Or tomorrow or, 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 or two days down the road, right? Um, listen to some Latin, you know? Listen to, listen to how it groove. Listen to the way the, the instruments relate to each other. Listen to the roles that, they, that your instrument will play as against the role of another instrument, the drum and bass. Listen to the conversation between the drum and bass. What's going on? What's going on? You know, who say what? Who do what? Who call and who answer? Right? Because trust me, call and answer. All of these things are happening in music. You know, right? So, these are the important things. Right? Um, so, interpretation. No, hmm. interpretation. Um, so it's a particular adaptation to a version of work, method, or style. That's Webster Dictionary. Um, that's from the Webster Dictionary. Um, so interpretation. Hmm. Loosely, if you know what you are doing, right, do not stone me if you know what you are doing. Because some, maybe sometimes you don't know what you're doing. Right? Um, but and somebody's interpretation maybe can never be wrong. Interpretation of a piece. Maybe it, it might not be wrong musically. Like I said, don't stone me. It might not necessarily be wrong musically, but it might not be necessarily be the right choice for the occasion or the right choice to fill a particular purpose. Right? But your artistic interpretation is your artistic interpretation, and nobody really can take it from you, right? And beat you up fight, right? Um, so it's your adaptability and imagination, and it can be two great tools. Your so your sorry, your adaptability and imagination can be two great tools in influencing your ability to interpret or reinterpret creative ideas from the creative concept. So from your creative concept, paint a picture musically. Hmm. Right? Your, technically your technical facility will also influence how well and effectively you paint. 
I hope in the last. Right, I hope in the last. All right. So, so um, I will at this time go. I will use. I'll use a little psalm here, a nursery rhyme that everybody knows. All right. Um, I'll use a nursery rhyme that everybody knows, and kind of just reinterpret it. All right. I was going to reinterpret it stylistically, but I am thinking I had a thought um, to reinterpret it in terms of moods. Now, I won't be using any big cards, so sorry. Or I don't think they are well to what you guys are playing now. I'm mean, not really no big card, right? Um, but here goes. It's just different moods. Um, so let's call it the moods of Mary. <laughs> the many moods of Mary. Um, story of Mary and her little lamb. to a nursery rhyme version. Just using triads. So let's do the maybe the teenage first. I know that that could have worked for a teenage, don't it? Get ourselves in that trouble.
Mary did. Yeah? All right. So different moods, different attitudes. Um, all right. Now, is everybody with me? I Chris, say something. Is everybody dead? <laughs> 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 all right <laughs> all right all right um <laughs> have you asked it coming out here that thing all right okay um so i, I, I right. think bindi before you you move that i move on mm -hmm. um this is a picture that you painted um bindi on youtube is saying that he he saw mary while you were playing that. So I guess we, we were distracted while looking at Mary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, um, so I'm going to go through a few exercises to help you to do stuff like that. Now, um, so we're not going now into, like I say, we're not going into technical harmonies. No, no, no. I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. Right? Um, but understand that allow your life's experiences to influence your interpretation. Right? Um, your peaks, troughs, the high days, your low days. Right? Allow, you have to find a place to act from, or to act from, to play from, you know. Um, why I said act, because, you know, actors have to do it all the while. Sometimes, you know, find a place to cry from and, you know, them kind of stuff. All right? So, 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 we use cycles and tempo changes, yes, for practicing, right? Um, and... Now, cycles, we can use cycles of fifths, cycles of fourths, cycles of major thirds, minor thirds, major second, minor th seconds, and you use them ascending and descending. All right? I hope nobody is lost. I figure some people might be lost. Hush. Right? Um, now, when I say fifth, we're talking about the interval. So, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Major scale, everything kind of built on that, right? To give them a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Or octave. Um, so if we say the fifth, then it's five. One, two, three, four, five, right? And I'm playing in C, so the fifth of C is G, right? And then we go to the fifth. So, and then we start a new scale. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth of G is D. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth of D is A. And we carry on like that. And that is the same. We use that same principle um, for these cycles. So we say, again, fifths, fourths, major thirds. So the, when we say major third, that is the third that comes in your major scale. The do, re, mi, the regular sounding do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, is your major scale. Right? But then now, when we say minor thirds, when we lower the third, we call it minor. Right? Um, right? One, two, three. Right? Um, then you have major second, that is the second which occurs in the major scale. One, two. And just the same principle, when we say minor the third, we lower the third. Minor the second. We lower the second just beside each other all right use that descending ascending descending okay so i'm going to use one note right one note and i'm going to move chords around the note right so i'm going to what should i do should i use a fourth no um i'm not going to use any one of those way out um, cycles, what I'm going to do is I'm going to descend chromatically and then ascend chromatically. Chromatically means every note on the keyboard. 
yes so we use so if we're in C right then we go down to a B B flat right and right down back to C all right so using C as your top note Textures. Right, that was it. Descending, ascending, and note I'm just using, like I said, I'm not going into too much sevens or anything like that, just keeping it very, very simple, right, to teach the principle. Ascending, so we're going up from C, C sharp, D, secondary cards tertiary cards um, yeah and pretty much that's it you know pretty much that's it um, so practice understand your cards understand your skills um, try to be able to try to use a metronome when you're practicing right so that you are able to um, mark your development um, when you become more comfortable at one tempo step up the tempo with the exercises and, 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 and stuff um, that is it in a nutshell <laughs> I hope everybody got something and it was not too way out or anything like that uh, I guess we all left the, the show bro <laughs> Is that is that easy being a host and a musician and listening to this? I tell you at the same time, man. Oh my God, bro, that was amazing. That was an amazing presentation, bro. Thank you, sir. All right. We try. We try. At this time, I have to allow the guys to interact. So after the presentation, then we ask the persons on Zoom and YouTube to interact with our guests on the Music Hacks Network. So what I'm going to ask the guys on YouTube to do is to type your questions in the chat and I will ask them for you. The persons on Zoom, I'm going to ask you to open your, your microphones and your camera, all right? And then you will ask your question. Uh, we don't want uh, more than one person doing um, that on Zoom, though. Just put your hand up. I will call your name. And then we will go from there. Romaine Brown is first on Zoom. Please put your hands up. And then I will indicate. And it will move from there. Let's take Romaine. All right, guys. Good night. And good night, sir. Oti. Good night, Romeo. All right. Um, thank you, sir. My, my, my first question, I, I have two. Mm -hmm. um, I play keyboard. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would consider myself intermediate. Mm -hmm. um, so far, in terms of, uh, I'm, I'm learning where to keep the melody on top. Mm -hmm. 
um, and, and work in my cars from there. So what, so what I'll do is like, I'll hear the song and then use the melody and then try to figure it out from there. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard you mention about intervals, fifths and fourths. Um, and then, all right, so my first question is prior to melody, if, if that's the right approach, hearing the melody and then work it from there and see if I can get my cards into play. What's your thoughts on that? Okay. Um, that's a good approach. I don't know if I would say it's a right or a wrong approach. Um, mm. My suggestion is here the two extreme notes. Here are the notes at the top. Here are the root note um, as well. So your melody and your bass note, your bass is critical. Um, but then the thing with the tricky thing with the bass is that it can invert the chords. So right. you might think one thing is the root when it is not the root, but it's just a note in the card, right? Um, so, so yes, you're on a right track, right? Just right. add the add the importance of the root note to it and um and work out the shape or the color in between the two cards in the two in between the two notes sorry okay so and just real quick just real quick um over the years of playing in your gear uh, i would just like to know maybe do you have a preference in terms of keyboard that you love mm-hmm. brand or anything with gears all right to enhance um, Peter, um, interpreting all your right. art or all right so it so i choose gear um depending on 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 the job right um a good a good a good a good what you call that now buffet to have right um are the sound libraries of your roland your yamaha and your Korg. um you can conquer everything from right there, so <laughs> right. Um, now, if you're going to get, you know, if you're going to get pe- peculiar, right? Um, then no, if, especially if you're going to do maybe do some serious organ work, you can try to have a dedicated organ. If you're going to do serious <coughs> piano work, try to have a dedicated piano. Right, um, by de- dedicated organ now, I am talking about ideally a Hammond B3 or C3 or whatever. Right, if you can't get that, um, the Nord is nice, right? Um, and you have a few others that are out there. Um, for your dedicated piano work, try to have a weighted key instrument. Um, because it's more expressive, um, so that that would be what I would say. That would be, yeah, that would be it. All right, thank you so much. Yes, uh, sir, and and keep practicing and do well. Big up. Thank you. Yeah, man. <laughs> Respect, Romain. Thanks, thanks, Chris. All right, um, let's take Charles Deans. Sir Oti. Yes, Charles. Well gone. Um it's interesting that he asked about boards. I was going to ask if you still have the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's still on my rig. All right. It's still on my rig, but but no, I don't own one right now. All right. Uh one of the things I wanted to talk about what wants to mention was I I remember two shows where I looked off stage. And Oti was there supporting the, the, the other acts that were there. You know, sometimes people try to um to kind of to kind of grade musicians, or oh, these are the, the guest show musicians and these are just the the, 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 the opening act musicians. How important it is, is it that we form a family, a mentorship program kind of thing where we all look out for each other. We support each other. We will even pull each other aside after a show between set or whatever and continue to talk about things almost 
almost as a way of passing down right um things that that, that we would do things that we have learned over the years so that these the musicians coming up can have a great understanding of the role of being a musician and not just the musicality of it <laughs> um good question Charles. good question it is very important but um it's a two-way street it's a two-way street so the younger musician needs to be teachable and need to um really understand that okay this old guy who you know maybe not playing as flashy as i am today that person may actually have some insights that are useful right and um the old guy needs to know do the work and avail themselves right so it's a two-way street and it, it is very very criti critical 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 very critical you know um so we hope that um with through a network like this you know it will foster that kind of relationship anybody else Where all right it? charles bless up yourself let's take a question from youtube this is from gregory what gregory want Gregory Palmer. No, take no question from Gregory. <laughs> no question from Gregory. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, man, Gregory's asks it, what is your preferred choice of reharmony? My preferred choice of reharmony? He needs to elaborate. What do you mean? I think probably um, if you're trying to reharmonize a song, mm -hmm. you know, how would you go about go doing changing the chords and uh, and stuff like that? Well, it it depends on the picture that I'm trying to to paint, right? So it depends on the whole context of the thing. Um, if I'm reharmonizing a song in order to make you cry, you know, I choose the cards that will do that if i want to reharmonize a song to highlight strength i choose the cards to do that you know if i want to reharmonize a song for the sake of comedy and drama then we choose the cards to do that so there is no real favorite it's just what you feel in the moment I hope that answers your question, Mr. Palmer. Okay. All right. Let's take some more from Zoom. I'm still waiting to see the, the hands, guys, on Zoom. All right. This is a question from Jermaine Francis. And you know, Jermaine Francis, who <laughs> Jermaine fees about. I'm a master. <laughs> and he's playing. Big up yourself, Jermaine. Yes, yeah, man. Blessings. And yeah, guys, so I, wa I want to tell you publicly, but, um, Jermaine had um, quite a lot to do with Mr. Othniel being on the show tonight. All yeah, right. Man. Big up yourself, Jermaine. Yeah, Blessing. Blessings. Yes, yeah, Othniel, so we have two questions for you. So the first mm -hmm. one, um, Charles was saying, you were saying something about, you know, the whole of musicians, you know. So I know you're from way in the 90s. So what do you do to stay current? To date because now even though we have younger musicians coming out and young musicians sounding good but you're still the otty from then till now <laughs> so what do you do you know to keep yourself going uh, as a keyboard player okay um i don't do much of it but really what i try to do you know is is what i said earlier try to try to be prepared understand the genre that i'm going to play and 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 you know truth be told a lot of it might actually not be the playing a lot of it might just be personality i don't you know i try not to give any trouble i mean okay. talk talk and get up in a people's face and that kind of thing so behave yourself and just 
fill your role. <laughs> you know? Okay. Just fill your role, man. Fill your role. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what you're supposed to do. Right? Um, and obviously, like I said, if you're going to do contemporary music, start listening to some contemporary things. Right? Um, if you're going to do reggae, you know, what, whatever. You know, try and just invest the time to listen to the genre. Short man last week, Ken Roy said, listen to um, his favorite. He listens to his favorite instrumentalist, right? I differ in that I listen to the genre, right? Okay. And hear, hear, the in, hear what happened, hear the sounds that they use and this and that. And sometimes, you know, get it right at the first go, you know. Um, it's like um, I recently started, you know, being like the main keyboard player for Shaggy. And Lord Jesus, Corey is here. <laughs> All right. And um, started being the main keyboard player for Shaggy. And generally have, a, from church and stuff, have a little orchestral mindset and that kind of thing. But really, Sh Shaggy gig is not the orchestral gig. Right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a pop gig. So I have to know change my diet and try and wheel and come again and nobody now cost me you know and that kind of thing but i ask the question how am i doing what can i do better and just seek to improve yourself understand you don't that you don't have it all you don't you don't know everything you know you have growth left right so just go in like i say plug into the genre plug into the genre that you're going to play understand the genre and go for it and also be technically proficient right do your skills get them up to tempo um understand balance between get your dexterity together right if you're playing piano alone and don't 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 you know don't <laughs> don't weaky weaky and thank you thank upon the thing right um so if you're doing melody try and ensure that your melody if you're doing piano alone ensure that your melody um is is not drowned by your cards all of that is in the whole thing you know try you have to just go in you have to just go in you have to just yes, go in like with shaggy thing you know everybody know me and me like my keyboard them who don't know that right and and <laughs> but shaggy thing said no for me and stage i you know so now we have to go and try to learn this main stage thing. Problems, right? Mm -hmm. But it's growth. Because I already have my keyboard thing down. So when I add the main stage thing now to, to, to my arsenal, I'm only better. You know? So there's all, always room for growth, always scope for growth. So just keep growing, listening, digging, do your research. Yeah, one more question, real quick. Yes, um, so a set list, how mm -hmm. do you approach working out your, your, your songs when you get your set list to work out? What, what's your approach? You know, working out your songs, okay? Good question, good question. All right, so I will start in school to listen for the form, right? So you listen the form, you listen to the progression, right? Um what I do, right, is if I have a list of songs to play, I first write them down, write out the keys, um, get the form, right? When I say the form, no, it means intro, verse, chorus, of the arrangement, intro, verse, mm -hmm. chorus, verse, chorus, chorus, bridge, that, 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 right? Um... I write out, I make a note of the sounds that are played in the different sections, and I make a note of the progression. So I possibly notate the progression. Um, yeah. By right, you're supposed to really note it, even the, even the melodies. But my kind of weak with the part there, right? With the notation of the melodies, so I really, maybe Corey can help me. Right, can bail me out, but you know, but really, that is really how you do it. Um, and then now, added to that is 
hardcore listening. Alright? So you listen to it hardcore so that when you're playing it, you can play it naturally because now you listen to it over and over and over. So it becomes a part of your subconscious. Right? And now you draw for the paper, you draw for your notes when your memory fails. Or you know, say something's supposed to happen, but oh, what it's supposed to play again? And then the, 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 the paper will jog your memory. So that is what I do. All right, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, blessings. All right. Blessings. All right. Um, let's take Daniel Edwards. Um, I, I want the, only the persons who are asking the questions to keep the, the videos open. All right. Um, Daniel Edwards. Yes, good day, good day. Um, good day. Let's turn on my camera. So my my question is um how you approach playing Uggs keys, supporting keys for somebody. What's your approach? Um and yeah, I'll come up with the next question after it. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so, okay, I'll ask you a question, um, are you talking now, if we are playing, if we are reproducing an already recorded work, or if we are now creating a work? Um, I already produced one. Well, that's simple. Just learn the parts <laughs> and play the parts, right? So if, if your keys one is playing piano and you guys like play piano and put a whole heap or something on it, right? Um, but really, it's hard to mix that way there. Um, yeah, just saying, right? Um, so that person is playing particularly piano I may have a little mix of a little, maybe a little pad, a little thing on it, um, depending on the sound. Well, I will take the other parts, right? So I may have to do organ and I may have to do some brass and maybe put a little bell there. And I may have to play a triangle and you play the triangle when the triangle must play. And when, the when nothing else is playing, you just sit, sit out, right? And enjoy the music and, you know. Yeah. be on stage occupy the stage and when your time to play come again you play so yeah. you don't just play willy-nilly and i would like to add right if you feel expressive if you want to go on and you learn a new lick and that kind of thing understand that today is not your day for that you do that at your yard <laughs> Right? Don't mm -hmm. bring no lick and, and no bag of fancy thing unless you are asked to do that. Mm -hmm. Right? Because everybody can be doing that. Then it's pure confusion. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, but that's it. a lot of that is going on today. My time mm -hmm. to say. All right? Big up thyself, yeah. Daniel. I hope I answered yeah. your question. I have a next question, but I want right. to yeah. you inspire me. I don't inspire enough people, but you inspire me, especially in the board that I buy, a Roland. <laughs> oh, wow. A Roland is eating. Um, yeah. That, nice. That's all that inspire me. Wow, thank um, you, Daniel. My next question is, um, I know it personally. I've heard it before because um, Andre, no, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Young, Mm -hmm. I'm always sharing this with me that it's important to know the songs in the keyboard and not just to play it like a keys you would have played, but play it like the actual instrument. So more you share more on that. Boy. 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 Yes. Yeah, man. That's a good one. Well, um, so before that that again comes to listening and and, 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 and the whole interpretation and the whole um, adaptability. You have to 
when you're doing strings, think like a violinist. You know, if you're doing brass or wind instrument, understand that a brass section or wind section can play continuously. They're going to drop down and dead. They have to breathe, so they have to stop. Right? Um, so, things like that, and the way you, you know, <laughs> I don't know the way you approach it, the way you the way you play. You, you, have, you have to envision. You have to have an active imagination. Imagine the instrumentalist playing the instrument, mm -hmm. and try and you know be that. Try and do that. Try and create that sound. Yeah. 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 Well, well, the next question, but guess face. Uh, Dan Dan Daniel. Yeah, I, guess I, I know you have a lot of questions, Daniel. <laughs> um, guys, I'm gonna ask you please to limit the questions. I am looking on YouTube and the, the list is long. All right, so no more than two questions. <laughs> well, two short, short questions for Mr. Lewis. We don't want to keep him here all night. All right, so let's take two from YouTube and then we forward to Zoom to take Corey and Morris. All right, two from YouTube. And Andrew Goff is asking, what are some of the specific modes that you would use over Blue Bossa? Blue Bossa. Oh, Blue Bossa, go again. Um, oh my God, I don't even remember how Blue Bossa go. I have not played that song in so long. Sorry, I don't remember. Da, 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 da. Okay. that point for the for the first card you're on um, the aeolian right which is the mode on the six scale degree right then we go a two card dorian right then ionian seven understand now that this is a secondary dominant so it's five of c so we c major right um so we've gone to um i said mixolydian back to the i back to the aeolian right i'm gone it's a two five one right so dorian mixolydian um The, the, sorry, the, so the, the um, mode on seven is the Locrian. Yes, I'm sorry, my teachers. Delhi is here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm back to the, the Locrian. And those modes will take you through. But obviously, you know, um, you can do broken chords. Um, you can do a harmonic um, variation. You can do melodic variation. So it don't have to be modal. Zine? Yeah. All right. From Bindi, mm -hmm. what is your creative process like in a studio session? All right, Bindi. All right, Bindi. Big up yourself, Bindi. All right. Um, hmm. Oh, oh, well, as a producer or as a musician? As a musician, um, I try to hear what the producer wants. And um, 
try to give the producer what the producer wants. As a producer, I try to have a vision for where the song is to go. Um, color the melody, right? Color the melody. Hear the, hear the feel of the song, right? And um, make the necessary choices. Um, and as a producer, that means from you now musicians to background singers to even the choice of studio, the approach, whether we're going live drums or we're going programming and all of those kinds of things. Um, um, and a, a very important thing about my approach um, in studio is I, I, I like to to give a picture of the words so so I, I, I try to allow the songs to kind of you know paint a picture of, of what the song is saying I had to play a song the other day um, um, for Richie Stevens them and um, the, the Dennis Brown the song that Dennis Brown did which is a line man which is that line man what that and the person have to sit down and tell me break down the song say exactly what the song is saying right and i was able you now to play the song because i that that's that's me that helps me create i need to know what emotion where the song is going what but what, what's this about you know and this person is longing for somebody and, and that kind of thing and, and, and so you put that in in the song you know um, and um, a song like 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 since it's, it's coming from Bindi a song like like if it's not you right um, you know for the for the for the realignment version for the live version you know and the, the opening line of the song is searching right and i just and i'm sure you get that idea of a searching, you know, somebody out in the dark searching, right? And the song builds. <laughs> right, and carry on, right? But all of that is, is the whole thing, you know? Um, and another, another song that, that I, I mean, I answered the question already, so, you know, move on. Yes. All right, respect. Yes. All right. This is a question from Tech Channel TV. Okay. How do you approach a solo? <laughs> All right. Um, now, there are different ways to approach a solo. Right? Um, so, a, a, a pop approach is different from a jazz approach, with, which Ken Roy pointed out last week. Um, my favorite, I, I, I love, I love guitar, yeah, I love a nice guitar, right, and one of my favorite guitar solos, right, is, is that solo on Try Ja Love, to me is the wickedest thing, right, um, the way the thing build and stuff, um, and the thing with a pop solo, which is different from a jazz solo, is that the pop solo just goes out and just shoots in, gets to the point, make the point, and leave. And that's it. Um, I am yet to, you know, let me not even say that. Yeah. Right. I, I, I still struggle with that because I tend to like the jazz solo. And the jazz solo now kind of tells a story and kind of is just this development. Right. So I will start from a one. I may start from from say um a melodic variation right um so if it's mary had a little um you know um 
So it start from, for me, I like starting from, from, from a melodic point of view. Um, yeah, so I like, I like, that's how I, I like starting. And I try now to incorporate um, the card tones, the upper neighbor, lower neighbor tones. So that is upper neighbor, lower neighbor to the card tone. So if it's, if it's a triad, that's a lower neighbor. Right? Uh, upper neighbor. Yeah? Lower neighbor. Yeah? So we do those things, um, with broken cards, and, 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 and carry on, and carry on. Yes, I hope that answers you. Awesome. Yes, sir. Let's take Corey Butler See you now, from Jesus. Zoom. See you now. Okay. Big up yourself, Mr. Butler. Oh, my goodness, man. Listen, I'm so happy I was able. Listen, I'm joining all the way from Canada. I could not miss this because, um, Ati, you have uh, been instrumental and continue to be instrumental, even in the way that I, I'm, I'm listening to you talk and I'm like, oh, that's where I got it from. Oh, that's where I got it from. Oh, wow. Just been instrumental. So so thank you. Thank you for the many, uh, the many musicians you have inspired, including myself, along your long and illustrious career. But here's my question. Um, you you are by far one of the most disciplined musicians I know, um, and and I want to know what what were some of the experiences you had as a young musician to establish the kind of discipline that you currently possess? Because I mean, a lot of these young cats, you know, they're you know, the, I call them YouTuber YouTube shedders. You know, they kind of go into the woodworks and they learn off YouTube and then they come out and they're like, ah, I can play and I deserve to be paid whatever, you know, you know, haven't paid their dues or, you know, no respect for, you know, anybody or anything like that. So mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the experiences that you might have gone through, whether good or bad, whether from other musicians or, you know, other older musicians? And, um, and question number two, um, what would be some, some advice that you could give to um, other younger cats in order for them to establish a similar level of discipline that you have in your approach to music mm. hmm. interesting interesting good questions Corey um, for everybody who don't know Corey Butler is one of the premier musicians music educators in Toronto right um corey does everything from jazz to classical this man goes to poland and and records people and and and, and conduct him orchestra and, 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 and do a bag of things this man ain't no joke right? <laughs> um, <laughs> and and as you see his name is butler um and so he's related to the butler clan the harold butlers and that kind of thing brilliant brilliant musician brilliant keyboard player sure. right and an excellent person all right um okay now i would i would chuck that up to i would really chuck that up to um my time the groups i worked with in my formative years you know corey i would chuck that up to um paul barkley Nigel Hutchinson, mm -hmm. Christopher Terrell, mm -hmm. everybody in change, and the man them from Shota Brothers. Right? I, I, that, that is really weird that all of that come from. And um, when, I went to, when I went to school of music, um, in my final year, it was only three of us. And we, are, we were all three piano players three phenomenal piano players everybody having access to the same information right have the same teachers but three distinctly different people three distinctly different expressions three just totally different piano players so therefore with that that okay so i got the discipline from 
those groups. But then that experience taught me the, the air is not necessary. Right? You don't, you, you don't need to, to have anything because everybody have their own fingerprint. We three, three keyboard players, everybody have the same information, but everybody different. Right? And everybody is creating storms now in, in their life. Andre mashing up the place, Courtney mashing up the place, and me, I try to do my thing. Right? Everybody, you know. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Right? Um, so I, my advice, my encouragement to the younger guys would be, man, just humble yourself, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Humble yourself. And, 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 and just stay the course and give Anna where, where Anna is due. Do the steps. Do what you're supposed to do. You know? And just, just, just humble. Just, just be humble. Just be humble. Everybody have them time. Everybody have them time. I had my time when I was doing every concert. No, I'm not doing every concert. Right? I've passed on and passed on the band to others. You know? So it go. Much appreciated, sir. Thank you for yes, all brother. you do and continue to do. Uh, you continue to inspire me, man, and um, I really appreciate you. Likewise, you, man. Bless Thank up. All right. Bless up. Bless up, Corey. All right, what I'm going to do, guys, on Zoom, and please see with me. All right, I'm going to take, I think we have about three questions on YouTube. YouTube. So I'm going to allow Mr. Ati to answer those three questions, mm -hmm. and then we close the 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 youtube live stream all right and then we will deal with the rest of questions on zoom all right is that okay all right so let's take this one from sir basent i hope i'm pronouncing this one properly um describe your favorite and least favorite part about being a musician and in the music industry <laughs> is it a beat is it about being a musician or being in the music industry or the music industry describe your favorite and least favorite part about being a musician okay all right so favorite part about being a musician is being a musician right um the travel the 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 freedom of expression like i said this is from a barn is it you know and um even if i try to go into classroom hardcore um i can't manage i have to be <laughs> i have to be playing or i have to be creating you know that kind of thing so that is my favorite part about being a musician the travel the very expression of it um and but it, I just love it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, those are, are, are two major things there. What I don't like, um, I don't like facets of the industry you now where people try to take advantage of other people, right. Um, I, I don't like that. I don't like um, the academics trying to take advantage of the creatives. I don't like the haves trying to take advantage of the have-nots. I, 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 I don't like it. It's not nice, it's not right. You know? Um, so those are the things I don't like. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um they can Morris. So one more question after this, Sir Lewis, mm -hmm. and we are good. Okay, sir. Morris? Yes, good, good night to everybody. Yes, sir. Um, Morris. Night to Sir Chris and Sir Lewis Othanil. Um yeah, one of the Greatest here in Jamaica here. And as you can see, um, his reputation even spread beyond Jamaica borders. Um, so big up to you, sir. Yes, sir. I think I stepped in a, 
a little late, um, but nevertheless, my question is, um, in jazz, how do you keep your left hand um, active and not at the same time monotonous? Um, you know, yeah, the type of syncopation that your left hand is supposed to be doing, but at the same time, you know, you're striking chords not being the same, but yet, you know, you, you're, you're maintaining the, the structure of the song. Okay. All right. Um, now, what paint a scenario? Are you talking now um, within a band setting or, 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 or not? Or me by myself or me just accompanying somebody? Just straight, maybe piano. So I'm, uh, what I'm getting at, is there a bass player or a bass player and drummer or no bass player? No drama. With, uh, with 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 a bass player. With a bass player. Um well and it's how how I maintain it. Yes, without being mon monotonous, being you know, not repeating um the same chord. Like on the one. Um and you might be seen on the one for two bars, uh, um or eight bars. How do you not sound? Um, monotonous. Okay. Being on the one. All right. Um, so at school, we learned a rhythm called the Charleston. Big up yourself, Maurice Garden. Right? And that is this. So, one. Hear what the card doing, right? The cards. Uh huh. Right. Uh, so, so you can use a rhythmic pattern. Remember, I was saying that you have a bass player. No? Right. Yeah. But remember I'm saying that you have a bass player. Yeah, but uh -huh. so, the, so the, so I was giving you, okay, I was giving you, not. Don't pay attention to the left hand that was playing bass. Because when you have a bass player, your, your left hand play chords. Okay. So I was giving you the rhythm of the chords. Right. Right, which is called the child's stand. Okay. So, pop, 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 pop. Right? So that is one thing that you can do. And it won't sound monotonous. So play a rhythmic pattern. Right? And occasionally you can change the chord. You know? And that kind of thing. Yeah? Okay. All right. Yeah, man. All right. So, and, and, and note that that is called comping. Right? So you comp, right, in order to not hold on the one card till thy kingdom come. Right? <laughs> but you do a rhythmic pattern. Yeah? All right. All right. Thanks. Yes, sir. Best of yourself. All right. Let's take... Stingray, our final question. Oh, Charles wanted to <laughs> sneak in another question. What, let's take Stingray. Stingray? Yes. yes, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Uh, I must say, no, I fully understand my brother as the old, old, old mind work from this. And, and I'm really... Surprised that Ati took on his channel. God, this is not Ati personality at all. <laughs> it's like, it is like Ati, it was left field. I'm with my friend, Yuan. We are together <laughs> listening to Oh, yeah, I say. As you know, Ati, I've told every keyboard player this that you are my favorite keyboard player. Why? You know what it means to accompany someone. Yes, and nobody. From I'm listening to the program from started and I know I realize you met to your madness. And I must say, my brother, I love you dearly. Although we are probably east and west to the, the, the spirituality, you're a Christian, I'm a Rasta man, but you have embraced me. You, yes. you, you, you haven't dealt with me over the years like other Christians have, have dealt with me. Oh, wow. 
You're mute. Yeah, you're mute, Stingray. Oh, sorry, yeah. Well, I, mm -hmm. I don't know how the party that you have earned. I'm talking about saying I love you as a brother. Yes, and I'm sir. saying you're on the opposite spectrum of, of spirituality. You're mm -hmm. a Christian and I'm a Rasta man. I say you have never burned me out like some Christian dealt with me and I, and I love you for that. But I've, I really appreciate, appreciate love this lesson tonight. So I, I know I finally figure how your mind work. <laughs> yes, and, bro. And I, and I really appreciate this program for bringing Ati Lewis to the fore to teach. Okay. Yeah, pull him out time share, definitely. So you and so you and you and Big up yourself, Mr. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sir. <laughs> but Ati, well, I am looking forward from an album from you. Yes. No sir. no, no, I realize yes, how your mind work and your approach. And what I love about you, Ati, your humility. The, the 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 way you express yourself you and always say to me that when Ate play with the band intonation you fool it up so if there's one keyboard player you make it feel like there's two or three <laughs> and I think you have, you have raised the bar every time with, with we, we will tell other keyboard players and few others that I like to like Brinton uh, and, and Danny Greaves mm -hmm. but few uh, we, uh, you and I was telling them say we, you need to fill the space. So mm -hmm. if we need two keyboard or we need an next guitarist, you need to fill that space. And and I think you are the benchmark. We always use your name as the benchmark. Wow. So you have a plate like Ati. Oh God. Be, and, and, and they are not offended enough because they mm -hmm. all look up to you. Yes, sir. So Ati, thank you. Thank the host for bringing you to, bringing you to the fore, for let Jamaica and the world know the greatness of Ati Lewis. You are probably similar to a Tom Bell. Wow. You are, you are my personal Tom Bell. I think, as I speak about Clive on several times, I said, Clive on, you are my Quincy Jones, but Ati, you are my Tom Bell. That's up, man. Wow. Yeah, man. And, we, and I love you. I, say, I always say that again. I love you dearly. Like and I want brother. you to come to the fore more with the album. And trust me, I enjoy that, that, that reggae month Wednesday gig. Yes, sir. That gospel night. I've, ne I've never danced that much in a while. <laughs> you understand? And you're the first Christian brother to bring me on a, on a gospel show. So I really appreciate of that, sir. Yes, sir. So, so what, what we want to ask you now? Mm -hmm. What should I ask you, you want? <laughs> what, Pressure. What we need to ask. We need to ask. Pressure. <laughs> need to ask, ask him. Ask him. Ati, yes, why are you... I know you play the keyboards and you're an excellent keyboard player. Mm -hmm. I never see a, I know you can program drum machine and all that, but I never see a venture in 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 playing like a I would say a saxophone that by pushing it. In playing guitars. Yeah, I, I just yeah, I just realized you just stick to keyboards and and I hear and I hear you, 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 you spoke about how much you love guitars or other. What instrument what would be in other from other from your alter ego want to be a lawyer. I would be a lawyer. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> what other instrument that you'd have taken on that you that you love? Yeah, yeah, that that, that, that you'd have loved to play, although you although you play the keyboard. Okay, um, so I before I played keys, I used to play drums. Right, um, I also dabble with the bass guitar a little bit, um. And like I said, I learned a couple of cards from my father. And then when I went to school of music, I learned some bar cards on the guitar. I just don't practice the guitar. Um, but if there is a one instrument that I would want to play, is bass. I love a bass. Love bass. You know? So that would be it. But like I said, I play bass. It's just that I don't practice. So sometimes we play in a church and them kind of stuff. Actually bought a bass once and, and, and kind of just chicken out and carry it back the following day. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Ati, thanks very much for this class. I, I really enjoyed the program listening to you. And I said, no, I know I figured out how your mind works. I, I realize you are very meticulous and your thought process in approaching, as a session musician, approaching stuff as a producer, 
you're very structured as the as the, as, as the way my learned friend here said <laughs> yeah it's got, it's so yeah, man, it's, I realize it's, that, I realize, I realize that there's a method to your madness. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yes, I will sir. tell you that we love you. I tell you, you are love amongst the the, 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 the people in the industry. Yeah, you are, you are love and respected. Wow. I must Thank you, I, I don't want to wait to give you flowers at your at, at what wait, wait, we're telling you no that we love you and we appreciate your humility. Wow. You Thank you, and sir. you always encourage. I see how I, I saw the way you dealt with the, the, the band on the and we, we did one rehearsal for that show, and people wouldn't realize it's just one rehearsal. But the way you put things together, I told you and that what we play as the opening as a band, you sang that in a voice note, <laughs> and, we, and we presented that live on the, <laughs> on the evening, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and and I realized, and you chose the song that you say you you you, you, you one of your favorite guitar solo, Love. Mm-hmm. 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 So, so you see, you see, it all came together tonight. You now you reveal <laughs> all your lo- all the things that you love. You, you, you chose the other song was well, the other song was uh, you make me stronger. Mm-hmm. But the process, though, I really appreciate listening to the process and how you put things together. And this is a learning experience for m- m- myself. That's what I say. When I watch sure. when I watch Tom Bell interview, like I'm the Cena Atti. Like you're 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 the mirrored version of a Tom Bell. Wow. And Tom Bell and Tom Bell, you know Tom Bell from no, the Philly Sound, he's an excellent producer. Oh the Philly Sound. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah. Okay. Wicked. All right, we love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah man, yeah, Tom Bell, the two other guys was 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 yeah, was man. two other guys from Philly Sound. Philistown production name. Yeah, that had a name eluded me right now. But you know the Philistown, all those mm-hmm. childlight songs. Mm-hmm. As as a, as a, I always tell the story, Tom Bell, Tom Bell had a mind block mm-hmm. in the studio. They went outside for a walk. And by the time they took that walk, they went back with a song. They watched a scene played out. Mm-hmm. This guy was trying to get the attention of this lady. Mm-hmm. The lady, he walked the lady down. The lady turned the corner. He followed her around the corner. By the time he finally got the attention of the lady, it wasn't the lady that he thought he knew. And mm-hmm. the song I came up with, Today I saw somebody look just like you. I thought it was you. Mm. Then you turned the corner. I called out your name. I felt so ashamed because it wasn't you. Wow. You understand? And that song is... You are everything. I say, the yeah. song is "You Make Me Feel Brand New." Mm. God bless you. You mm-hmm. make it, and that's the song. They went up. They went up from that experience and wrote that song. Cause they, they, they had a mind. They had a writer's block, mm-hmm. and they went on the street and saw the spirit. Saw a scene played out in front of my eyes, and that's what I saw here tonight. Mm-hmm. You, the approach you took to which the line man, yes, yeah, son. Mm-hmm. It's just a similar thing. They 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 use that experience on the street. And write mm-hmm. a song about it, watching that experience played in front of them. Mm-hmm. And the same kind of approach you're taking that Tom Bell kind of approach. That's why I say, you're our Tom Bell, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, All sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Take care. All, All right. right, my brothers, man. Good to see you now. All Bless right. up, Stingray. And you are in the great. All, you are All right. Um, so at this time, I would definitely like to thank Mr. Othniel Lewis for being here. Um, mm-hmm. This was quite a home experience, Sir Otty. Yes, right? sir. And you, you could have said no when Jeremy and Biggie Francis reached out to you. But you gave, um, gave us the, the, the benefit of the doubt here on the Music Hacks Network. And you came and you delivered. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you very much. All right. Yes. I, I cannot single out everybody and on um youtube because it's a lot of persons i want to say thanks to the persons who tuned in on youtube i really appreciate you join in this afternoon or tonight <laughs> so many times in life you know forget the true meaning of the reason why we are on this earth but we just want to tell everybody right you know and everything just give god thanks and praise you understand? 
Don't lose hope, don't give up. Because there is a bright today. See? Sometimes situations take you in a life you don't know what to do. Your money in the pocket, who the fee buy and the rent is give you. Don't follow friends, go do the wrong and get caught up. Push your in a sinking sand, just be charge up. Hold firm, be strong, don't be nervous. Lift up your hand to the hill and give thanks and praise. Thank him for another day. Every day that you rise, give him. We praise, you're still here today. Me now I'm gonna lose focus. No. All right, guys, go over there to YouTube and support Robert Carter. Yes, guys, that was an exciting show we had today. Before you go, remember, hit that subscribe icon. Help this channel to grow. I'm definitely looking for us to push towards that thousand subscribers.